This is Let's Talk with Liz, and I'm Liz. Hi, my YouTubers. Today, we are going to talk about camping in the pulpit. Now, I know this may really hit a lot of people, maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way. I am not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. I am just only speaking on things that I have seen and things that I've heard. And, you know, it's really an issue with a lot of people and a lot of people have gotten hurt um, all the way across the board with people in these high religious positions. So let's start with the lies that people are being told. Uh, you know, a lot of people are being in a, put in a situation where <laughs> they are saying, if you give this amount of money, you're going to get this. If you give a thousand dollars, you know, your home is going to be paid off and you may have a mortgage for probably left maybe like a hundred thousand of them you know let's just use that for example and uh, and so you have people running and and they're giving the thousand dollars and and they're telling you in 10 days you're going your house is going to be paid off and in seven days your house is going to be paid off or they are telling you spin around seven times and this is already done and the hurtful part about that is this is money that people have worked for, you know, hard earned cash. And they have actually, you know, put their trust in man, not God, but put their trust in man. And they have done these things. And in the midst of it, in seven days, nothing has happened. In 10 days, nothing has happened. And it is more hurtful uh, and people are in more debt than before they gave the thousand dollars. And a lot of these preachers are not there for the people to go back and say, hey, uh, what you told me didn't work. Uh, and then in some instances, the preachers are there. And when, you know, someone go up to them, if they can get up to them uh, without all the body gods and all of that, um, they are told it was something that they didn't do. And that's why it didn't happen. But yet and still, the preachers are getting fat on the hog, as they would say. Uh, uh, living in nice, big, palatial mansions and, um, you know, nice cars like, you know, Rolls Royces and Bent, you know, and having yachts and, and airplanes and things of that nature. Um, I have nothing against any pastor, preacher, bishop, reverend, whatever you want to call it. I have nothing against anyone. However, I do realize that um, Jesus, I don't know if you all could recall, but in the Bible, it says that he went in to the temple and he did something. He was angry and he turned over the money changers tables. He said, my father's house is a house of prayer and you have made it a den of thieves. And so many now have made the house of God a den of thieves. They are robbing God, yes, that's the the Bible says. Well, a man robbed God, and 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 they they're quick to say, "Will a man rob God?" Yes, with his tithes and his offerings, but they are robbing God because with some of these same ones who are telling you to pay tithes and offerings, they are not paying tithes and offerings. They're collect your tithes and offerings, and they're living high off the hall. They're not even doing what the Bible is saying to do, and it's really frustrating to see when a person may be sick and. And they and they feel, you know, when they're hearing a pastor or a preacher or someone say, oh, sister, a brother, so and so, if you give, give ten thousand dollars, God is going to heal your body or God is going to heal your son or your daughter. You have to give a sacrificial offering. And these people give this and, and, and there's nothing that happened. There's no matter.
manifestation of a healing, it is very, very hurtful and very, very painful because in some instances, people die without receiving those things that are being said. Because in a good bit of instance, God isn't saying it. It's man saying it and saying that God said it, but it's not God saying it. And I know some people are going to say, well, you know, they're pastors and this, that, and the third. But my thing is this, go back, look into your Bible. God told Abraham that he was going to have a son and that Sarah was going to bear that son. And even in the midst of that, Abraham took it upon himself to say, okay, well, maybe God wanted to do it this way. And so, you know, Sarah gave him his hand, her handmaid and Yes, they did it that way, but that wasn't what God wanted, you know, because God didn't say it was going to come from Sarah's handmaid. He told, he told Abraham that it was going to come from Sarah. And the reason I'm making that example is to let you all know that God cannot lie. God kept his word and Sarah gave birth to Isaac. So, you know, when, when pastors say to you that, well, you did something, you wasn't supposed to do, or you didn't do everything you were supposed to do. Look at the instance of Abraham and Sarah. They took it upon themselves to do something they weren't supposed to do, but God's word didn't change. Sarah still had that baby. And that's something we have to look at. We have to go back to the word of God and look into the word of God and be able to look and see what the word says and stop depending on a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, when clearly in the word of God, it says that the whole, you have no need for any man to teach you anything that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Now, it doesn't mean that God didn't give preachers and teachers and pastors and all of that, but we should rely on the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth to us when these men and women of God are saying these things and stop allowing them to pimp us. You know, some people uh, have gotten, you know, sold their, uh, have given their, their you know, when they pass away in their wills, they have given their homes, their, you know, their land and all kind of things to the church. And these people are taking it and using it for their own use. They're not even using it for the kingdom of God. And we have to, you know, ask God to pull the scales off our eyes that we be able to see clearly, and that we be able to hear him clearly so that we don't be people that are being used or pimped out by people of the faith. It's so many times that people are hearing God said this and God said that God said this and God said that. Well, let me tell you something and share something with you in the Bible. The prophet, um, uh, I'm going to get his name in a few minutes. Let's see. It's not, um, uh, it's not Naaman. Oh, maybe somebody can help me out in the comment section. But when he spoke, none of his words, the Bible said, none of his words fell to the ground. God honored every word that that prophet said. And I'm going to come back and tell you, if I can't recall it right now, I will come back and let you know um, the prophet's name. And he's because he said under Eli and none of his words fell to the ground. Everything he said, God. God honored it because God, he only spoke what God said. He only spoke what God said. And because he spoke what God said, God honored him. And so my point to you is when these men and women of God are saying stuff to you, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. If God didn't say it, it's not going to happen. Everything the Bible has spoken of from the coming of Jesus, it has come to pass. When the, when the prophet Isaiah spoke of it, it came to pass. And thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Samuel was the prophet's name. When anything Samuel said, the Bible said that none of his words fell to the ground. He honored everything that Samuel said. And even when the coming of Jesus came about and the prophet Isaiah spoke of Jesus coming, it came to pass because God spoke and he said it. Yes, we all want to have nice homes and nice cars and, and nice everything. And God wants to bless us with those things. But the Apostle Paul said that I know how to be content. And sometimes we have to learn how wherever we are in life, how to be content and not fall for these tricks, because that's what they are. They're tricks, manipulation. 
And believe me, every man going to have to give an account for himself and they're going to have to pay the price. They may not pay for it on this end, but one thing about it, when they get on the other end, they have no no choice of them. And so my thing is, is that I really do pray for the body of Christ, for the church, because there are a lot of pastors that are pimping the members. And what they don't realize is that that blood is going to be on their hands in the end. So woe unto them as the word of God says. Thank you for joining me on today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, love yourself.